Thanks, Maury. Um, I'm one of the attorneys for Yassine Araf. Yassine's an Iraqi Kurd who came to this country as a UN refugee in 1999, and shortly after he became the Imam of the Masjid as Salam here in Albany. And he was targeted by the FBI at some point after 9-11. The mosque was targeted and Yassine was targeted. We're not totally sure why, but we believe that it had to do with him speaking out against the war. That was one of the things, that he was speaking out against the war, even though he was Kurdish. He, was, he knew this war was going to be a disaster in Iraq, and he spoke out against it pretty early. And I think that's one of the main reasons he was targeted, because in 19, or 2004, he and his co-defendant, Mohammed Hussein, were arrested. There was a, an extensive and incredibly unfair and crazy FBI sting operation carried out against them. And they are uh, in that banner up there over there. There's Yassine and Mohammed. And Yassine um, and Mohammed were convicted in 2006 after a trial. Uh, I can't even go into the case, but I, I'm not going to go into all of the unfair things. But it wasn't even anything Yassine did. All he did was witness a loan that he thought was a legitimate loan. And it wasn't anything he said. There were all these recordings. He didn't even say anything that they could use against him. It was what the provocateur said, that Yassine wasn't even paying attention. And it was all these hints that didn't even really add up to much. So it was incredibly unfair. And on the appeal, I thought there were so many ways I thought it was going to be reversed if the law had been upheld. And I should have known better. But I saw every single constitutional right we were supposed to have go completely out the window in that case. And then I found out there were all these other cases. Um, but Yassina Mohammed in 2007, they were both sentenced to 15 years in prison, which was half of the guideline sentence, because we showed a lot of community support for them. So they got 15 years, which is still completely outrageous. And Yassin, as Maury mentioned, was sent to the communication, communications management unit, first in Terre Haute and then in Marion, Illinois. And that's it's supposed to be a quarantine unit to isolate mainly Muslim, Muslim prisoners who speak out politically from everybody else. And there's a few non-Muslims in there, too. There's some environmental activists in there, too. And it is very restrictive. And the worst thing is he can't have contact visits with his own kids. His little kids can't hug their father, even if they make the two-day trip out there to visit him. And his wife can't either. And, and yet, he's not silenced. He wrote a book about his life called Son of Mountains that's out at our table, the Project Salam table that has the um, names of the victims of preemptive prosecution as a backdrop um, because there's so many, and that's not even all of them. Anyway, he wrote a book called Son of Mountains, and he wrote this message for you, which says, Welcome to our city. Welcome to Albany, whose city council passed a resolution asking the government to review the cases of many innocent men who were unfairly targeted wrongfully convicted, and sentenced to long prison terms, far from their families and loved ones. Dear friends, there are those lobbying behind the scenes, using the media, money, and politics to mislead our government and misguide people by giving them the wrong information, fabricating stories, and exaggerating claims about a terrorist threat in order to keep the wars going and divide the community. They want us to hate our neighbors. They want us to distrust our friends. They want us to fear each other, all in order to make people support the wars and the discrimination which is destroying our nation, our values, our constitution, and our place among nations. Dear friends, today more than ever, we need to stand united with a clear and strong voice and say to our government and our president, stop the wars immediately and do not drop any more bombs in our names. Clean the oil spill in the Gulf and do not allow any companies to dig more wells. Close Guantanamo and do not torture or mistreat any human beings in the name of safety. Close the CMUs and do not prevent children from hugging their dads. Do not isolate and dehumanize anyone in the name of security. Free all the political prisoners. They have committed no crimes but have been targeted and trapped and framed for their beliefs and because they spoke out. We need to stop global warming and decrease air pollution. We need free health care and medicine for everyone, especially the sick and elderly. We need free and improved education for our youth. We need peaceful relations with the world, and we must lead by example, not by force. We are here to ask the president 
Where is the change he promised? Where is the change people voted for? Why is our army still in Iraq? Why are our sons still dying in Afghanistan? Why is Guantanamo still open? Why do CMU prisoners have no contact visits? Why do millions still have no health care? Why are more schools closing in our country? Why is the number of foreign visitors and students declining year after year? Why is the world not safer now after 10 years of bloodshed and the waste of hundreds of billions on the war? <laughs> Mr. President, you cried out for peace and justice. You cried out for freedom and dignity. You spoke of change, but now it seems like it was only about winning the election, just like all the other politicians. <laughs> Dear friends, our future as Americans and as human beings, as well as the security of our country and the entire world, depends on what we do. If we can prevent fools, greedy lobbyists, and corrupt politicians from destroying our values and our Constitution, and if we say no to discrimination and preemptive prosecution, we will save our nation and the world. Otherwise, we will all end up victims. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming here to say no to war. Thank you for standing for peace and justice. Yours in solidarity, Yassin Araf, unfairly targeted and wrongfully convicted, isolated prisoner who can't have contact visits with his children. Thank you. <laughs>